Moving now to cycles. Technicians use various cycles to predict future movements in security prices. Even cycles in fields such as astronomy and climate can influence the economy and hence capital markets. The way you can think of this is that the climate will impact, say, agriculture. Agriculture will impact the economy, which in turn will impact capital markets. The cycles that you need to be on top of are given right here. There is a little more detail in the curriculum, but I think the material on this slide should be good enough in terms of covering what you get on the exam. You have something called the Conratif or K wave. This essentially says that Western economies have a 54-year cycle. Then there is an 18-year cycle where we have three 18-year cycles which make up the 54-year cycle. Generally, this is used in real estate prices but also found in equities and other markets. You have something called a decennial pattern. This pattern connects average stock market returns with the last digit of the year and it has been seen generally that years ending in zero, for example, 1990, have shown a poor performance relative to, say, years ending in five, such as, say, 1985 or 1975. These have shown good performance. And finally, the U.S. presidential cycle. This suggests that the third year following an election shows the best performance because this is the time where the president is trying to boost the economy so as to have a better chance of being re-elected. The Elliott Wave Theory. This is another area where you will find a lot more detail in the curriculum, but from an exam perspective, I think knowing the basic information here should be sufficient. This is named after the gentleman who came up with the theory. So what Mr. Elliot determined was that markets move in regular repeated waves or cycles. And he came up with a pattern of five waves as shown below. So wave one up, two down, three up, four down, five up, and then a reversal. So wave A, B, C. Market waves follow patterns that are ratios of numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. And with the Fibonacci sequence, you have 0, 1, 1, and then every number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So 3 would be the sum of 2 and 1, 5 is the sum of 3 and 2. The reason this is useful is that we can use ratios such as 1 over 2, 2 over 3, 3 over 5, 5 over 8 to predict the size of subsequent waves and obviously it is a correct prediction of subsequent waves that is going to be useful for a technical analyst. The final part of this reading is intermarket analysis. Intermarket analysis is based on the principle that all markets are interrelated and influence each other. We need to look for an inflection point in one market as a warning sign for a change in another. And perhaps the most important point is that we use relative strength analysis for different groups of securities to make asset allocation decisions. Now, to connect this with what we saw earlier, when we talked about relative strength analysis of stock A, we talked about the price of stock A divided by the S&P 500, where A is a stock that might be in the S&P 500. So we were looking at the performance of A relative to the index which contains A. With intermarket analysis, we actually look across different markets. So we might take stocks and represent stocks by a given stock market index and we plot a graph that shows the stock market index divided by say a bond market index. If this graph is going up, that would imply that the stock market is doing well relative to the bond market. 
if this starts coming down, then our analysis tells us that the stock market is not doing well relative to the bond market. So we can use inflection points such as this to make asset allocation decisions between stocks and bonds. We can use a similar analysis to consider the allocation of various sectors in an economy. So this could be done for the pharma sector versus the energy sector. It can also be done for securities from different countries. So you can have the US index divided by the Indian index and do a similar analysis which will help you decide what percentage of your portfolio to have here versus here. I have covered this material at a high level but again I will emphasize you, you don't need to get too hung up with the details as long as you know the main points chances are that you will be able to deal with the question that you get on your exam. Let us summarize the main points. You need to understand the principles and assumptions. So technical analysis is based on the idea that we look at stock prices and volume data and use that information to try and predict what will happen. And we do so by using charts, trends, chart patterns and technical indicators. Now here with charts, we talked about your simple line chart, bar chart, candlestick chart. So those are perhaps the most important charts. Then we talked about the fact that we can have a uptrend, which is essentially where the trend line connects the lows. We can have a downtrend. We have the concept of uh, support and resistance. So this would be your resistance line. This is support. Then we might have a change in polarity where your old resistance might become the new support. We talked about chart patterns where we have continuation patterns or reversal patterns. The most important reversal pattern is the head and shoulders pattern. Then we talked about four kinds of technical indicators that you need to be on top of. We have price based and then momentum oscillators which are also based on price but are a little more sophisticated. Then we talked about sentiment based indicators and flow of funds based indicators. We talked about various cycles such as the 18 year cycle, the presidential cycle and so on. The Elliott wave theory was a brief one slider and you need to be on top of the material that we covered there. You need to know the basics of the Fibonacci series and the ratios that I showed you on the slide and then intermarket analysis which we just covered. As always go over the learning objectives, do the examples in the curriculum. They are not that many but the few that are there are good. Now extremely important that you do the practice problems in the curriculum. Unlike the other quant readings where the questions are quite difficult, the technical analysis questions in the curriculum are exam type. So you will notice that all of them are multiple choice and they are a very good indication of what you might see on the actual exam. You will also note that those questions do not get into too much detail. So they are again a good indication of what you will get. Do them several times. And then as I keep saying, try to practice from other sources also that just helps you retain this material in a better way. That is it.